Now, I know you're going to be twice as loud when you bring them up here, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. He's starring in a documentary uh, about stand-up comedy called Road Dogs. Please welcome from Chicago, it's Josh. I got to say it right. Alton. Alton. Oh, sorry about that. Josh Alton. <laughs> Trust me to screw it up. Hey, keep it going for Ken, everybody. Ken kind of looks like Santa Claus's little brother, doesn't he? All right, way to go, Ken. <laughs> How you guys feeling tonight? Muskegon, whoa, what's going on here? All right, the rest of you, how you guys feeling? Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Glad to see the whole town could make it out to the show tonight. Uh, looks good. Hey, I'm looking to have some fun tonight. I'm looking to do some partying. I want to cut loose and have some fun. Uh, I want to have fun tonight because I've had a rough day. Uh, get this, yesterday, or t earlier today, I actually fell off my bike. Yeah, I fell off my bike. I hit my head. I scraped up one of my knees really bad. Everybody else in the entire gym was laughing their asses off at me. Now I'm the only guy that has to ride the stationary bike while wearing a helmet. <laughs> Sucks, yeah. But, uh, drove into town today. Took me like three hours to get up here from Chicago. Not too bad of a drive at all. Uh, mostly on the interstate. Uh, but I was trying to keep up with traffic while I was on the interstate. Everybody else is doing like 75, 80 miles an hour here in Michigan on the interstate. And uh, unfortunately, when my car tries to go that fast, starts having this massive seizure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even just 10 minutes of that, and my girlfriend doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why we almost had to break up. Our car trying to run off of the car one night. Yeah, I can't compete with that shit. That's, uh, man. My car's in bad shape, too, man. My car's in such bad shape that the service engine soon light bulb has now burnt out. <laughs> car breaks down all the time. I don't know anything about cars. I know nothing about cars. And uh, I also don't have that reliable mechanic in the city of Chicago to fix my car up for me. So uh, whenever something goes haywire, of course, I've got to take it in and get it fixed, right? Well, they end up fixing everything in the entire car. I get that huge bill at the end of it. It's like anymore, I just want to run in, slam my keys down on their counter, and say, okay, just fix the car and make it quick. All right, buddy. <laughs> oh, you need a better angle? How about a three-point stance? Please don't forget my lube job this time, all right? It's, uh, I always try to skip you on that. <laughs> so you guys drinking? Round of applause. Who's drinking up tonight? Let me hear you. <laughs> Rock on. I'm just enjoying the beer right now. Uh, I have a favorite mixed drink, though, called the Jaeger Bomb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody that doesn't know exactly what the Jaeger Bomb is... It's a lethal combination <laughs> of Red Bull and Jägermeister. Yeah, and it's the perfect drink if you like being the biggest drunk asshole in the bar <laughs> that particular evening. Yeah, because Red Bull is an energy drink, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's going to speed your body up. Meanwhile, that Jägermeister is going to slow your mind way down. <laughs> You knock back a few of those toddies before you know it, you turn to this hyperactive, retarded idiot. <laughs> Women love that, guys. Take it from a full-timer. <laughs> winter's definitely here. It's cold outside, nasty. We got the snow. The uh, thing I hate the most about the wintertime, though, is the, that the air gets really dry. I got to use chapstick during the wintertime. In fact, I carry it around with me all the time. And whenever I got to carry chapstick with me during the winter all the time, I end up running into people that want to borrow <laughs> the chapstick off of me. Oh and it's never some uh, cool scenario like some hot blonde just happens to be walking down the street, she needs to borrow some chapstick or lips chap. No, it's never a cool scenario like that. It's always like my buddy Carl <laughs> that wants to borrow the chapstick off me. And then when I tell him no, he's always like, well, I'll use my finger. 
Yeah, meanwhile, I noticed Carl itching his nuts five minutes ago. Let's see, would I rather make out with Carl or would I rather kiss his nuts? Yeah, neither, neither. So, we got pet owners in the crowd here tonight. Round of applause if you have pets. Let me hear the pet people. Yeah, all right. Quite a few. Good. Uh, what about the, where are the dog people at? Let me hear the dog people. Round of applause. Okay, quite a few. What about the cat people? Where are the cat people at? Let me hear the round of applause. All women and one gay guy in the back there. That's, uh, that's no, be proud, man. I have cats, too. I, I'm more of a dog person, but I can't have a dog because I'm on the road so much. Uh, but I do have two cats. And uh, you know what? A lot of people don't like cats, and I can understand that. I do. Uh, but to those people, I will say that two cats, a bong, and a laser light pointer, <laughs> that equals hours and hours and hours of fun. Uh, that's a game that never gets old. Yeah, it's also a game the cat can never win either. So uh, that's something I like about it too. Now, a friend of mine just got married. The woman that he married has two cats. So obviously now they're married, they live together. He's got these two cats and he hates them. He hates cats. Yeah, in fact, the other day I'm hanging out over his place. I caught him putting little bits of tuna fish in the, ele in the electrical outlets. Uh, apparently he's trying to make it look like a suicide or something. <laughs> I was like, dude, get a bong and a laser light pointer. You're going to be fine. <laughs> so, I've been on the road a lot though lately, and uh, I've had a lot of bad luck with my hotel rooms here recently. In fact, a couple weeks ago, uh, checked into my hotel, got to the room. When I got there, I realized they had put me in the handicapped room, which... There's really only little differences between getting a regular room and the handicapped room. And there's good and bad things about it, as I found out. Uh, for me, the bad thing was that big toilet. <laughs> yeah, because I don't really like when my feet dangle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I'm six foot one, my feet shouldn't dangle anymore. In fact, I need them firmly placed on the floor where I can get a good push. That's just something I've grown used to over the years, so that was the only bad thing for me. And you know, at least they had those handlebars, so I was able to land my dismount. Uh, but the good thing about getting the handicapped room is a little thing called the detachable shower head. Oh, yeah. Because nothing, my friends, spells out pleasure. Like hitting up each and every one of your individual body parts with the detachable shower head. You know what I'm saying? Like I can sing a little bit when I'm in the shower. I can, yeah. But when I use that detachable shower head on certain areas of my body, I sound like Mariah fucking Carey. Oh yeah, I'm hitting that high note and everything. Uh, only thing that I didn't really understand about getting the handicapped room is the fact that they put a midget people on the front door. That didn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, if you think about it, unless there's another midget knocking at the door, <laughs> how the hell are they going to know who's knocking at the door, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see this disaster already. <laughs> oh, man. Now whose crotch is that? <laughs> Open the door here. Oh, Frank, that was you the whole time, man. I didn't recognize your balls there. Uh, <laughs> you guys like this stage they got up here? This is nice, isn't it? Looks like somewhere there's a mobile home missing its porch, but... Uh, <laughs> Some rednecks out there pretty pissed off right now. <laughs> Portable in case there's a tornado, you know. <laughs> Got the fireplace here. This is nice. Uh, I saw my parents last week. That was pretty cool. Yeah, no, it wasn't. I lied. It sucked. It was awful. It was horrible. I don't see them that often. They live uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. 
which is where I grew up originally, Des Moines, Iowa. And I went out there last week because my sister was moving out of an apartment in Des Moines. Uh, I wanted to help her out with the move. Uh, my little brother also showed up to help out with the move. And then my parents were there too, of course. So the whole family got together. And uh, whenever my whole family gets together, we always end up having these really awkward family moments. Yeah, so sure enough, about halfway through the move, my dad and I moved my sister's bed away from the wall. And when we did that, we found this big pile of empty condom wrappers on the floor. It's like, what are you supposed to say to your parents when you see something like that? Jeez, uh, Carrie seems happy. I don't know, what do you think, Dad? Uh, and my sister came strolling in like nothing, though. This, this didn't even phase her at all. She just came strolling in. She was like, yeah, so? Things got a little crazy last night. <laughs> Man, that shit ain't cool. Yeah, and my parents don't have any grandkids yet. No grandkids. But they are dying to be grandparents. They can't wait to have these grandkids. And the uh, thing is, you guys, I'm not ready for kids at this point in my life. Um, I, yeah. I can't even talk to little kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like somebody else would walk up to a little kid to talk to him. And uh, it'll kind of sound a little bit something like this. Oh, hey there. Look at you. Look how big you are. What's your name? And uh, whenever I walk up to a little kid and just try to talk to him, it always seems to come out sounding a little bit something more like this. Hey there, kid. Uh, what's your mommy's name? <laughs> wow, she is hot, huh? Wow, what a lucky kid, man. Breastfeeding on that. That's just a uh, lucky kid, I'm telling you. Yeah, I don't know, you guys. Um, uh, I'm definitely not ready for kids at this point in my life. I do know, know that much. But I do still enjoy practicing the art of conception. Uh, yeah, in fact, I've been trying to find out more about sex here recently. Um, I think it's important for the men to find out as much as possible about sex and about the female body. Am I right, ladies? Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys can say it because it's true. We don't know what's going on as guys. We're pretty clueless. So uh, I've decided to do a little bit of extra research. And the part of the female body that I decided to start with is the G-spot. Good place to start, right, ladies? Yeah. But first, I had to figure out exactly what that G stands for in G-spot because nobody seems to know. Um, I always assumed that for women, that G stood for good, great, gifted, gravy, geyser, get it done, or even go-go gadget orgasm. Uh, I always assumed any one of those would work just fine for women. Uh, now, for men, I always assumed that G stood for the Gilligan's spot. Yeah, because it's lost on some deserted island somewhere. We can't seem to find it. You know what I'm saying? I can take a three-hour tour down there and never find that son of a bitch. But I was determined to find out what this G stood for, so I got on the Internet. And I Googled the G-spot. <laughs> Sounds like a new move, doesn't it? Uh, Googled the G-spot. Come to find out that G actually stands for Grafenberg. Grafenberg, which is the last name of the German scientist that first discovered the G-spot. Yeah, and is now a personal hero of mine. <laughs> yeah, guys, think about this. Grafenberg doing his research alone. What the hell was that process like? <laughs> Hello, ladies. I'm Dr. Grafenberg. You've been brought in here today because I have a scientific hypothesis that states that women have one small spot 
inside the vagina that just drives them wild. <laughs> so I'm going to need you ladies to go ahead and get naked and line up. We'll get this procedure started. What a great scientist, man. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had a hypothesis right about now. Uh, I did make a discovery of my own, though. I am so proud of this. I am so very proud of this. I discovered that men actually have a G-spot. Yeah, yeah. Most people call it the penis. Uh, yeah, it's a little bigger than women's G-spot area. And, well, sometimes it's... it's uh, Oh, man. We know why your man didn't show up tonight. He, he probably doesn't ever leave the house. It's, uh, if my dick is smaller than my woman's G-spot, then... Uh, oh, man. The cool thing about ours, though, is that you can touch it anywhere it'll work. Uh, it's very convenient like that, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> How did you guys get stuck over here? You were late? Oh, that's like the penalty box over there. Show up on time next time, motherfuckers. You guys got to guard the presence. <laughs> hmm. You been shaking them, dude? No, oh, okay, not yet. <laughs> when I get bored with your act, I'll start figuring out what the presents are. Well, I don't know if you guys are ready to hear this one yet or not. But uh, you guys seem like you're pretty cool. I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Um, I actually found out the worst thing that a man can do while he's receiving oral sex. What is it? What I don't know. I thought, I thought you said something. <laughs> that obviously wasn't you that said it. So <laughs> Somebody over there said something, though. You look like you had an answer. That's why. That's uh, what happened. Just tell us. It's, you can just share it. No, we're all family here. Everyone here is a Muskegonian, or whatever it's called. <laughs> what is it? Muskegonite. Okay. <laughs> it's not Muskegonian, <laughs> like I said, because that rolls off the tongue so much better. Muskegonian. <laughs> Does anybody think they know what it is? Worst thing a man can do while receiving oral sex? Yeah, Fart. Fart. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a good answer, actually. That's, uh, that's not the right answer. Uh, welcome to Muskegon, though. Uh, fuck. That's <laughs> no, uh, no, that is a good answer, though. Um, <laughs> urinate might be the new number one, lady. Uh, I don't know that the one I have in mind tops urine. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, now she's pointing fingers. She's like <laughs> No, I'll just tell you guys, I I, uh, I didn't fart. I didn't urinate. On her or in her or whatever you were implying there. <laughs> I'll just tell you guys I did sneeze. Yeah, um, <laughs> men, if you sneeze during a blowjob, you're probably going to get a few battle scars <laughs> in a place where you don't want any battle scars. Trust me, I know. I had to get 12 stitches. Yeah, one in every inch. So. Yeah. Appreciate the concern there by everybody. That was really nice. Uh, that's why eventually, though, someday I wouldn't mind getting married. Uh, I wouldn't mind having somebody to grow old with. Uh, because eventually, someday, she's going to lose all of her teeth, and then it's on. <laughs> you guys imagine what it would be like to sneeze and orgasm all at the same time? To actually blow your nose and blow your load at the same time? What the hell would that be like. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I don't want to see what the Muskegon County Hospital is like. <laughs> shit. Oh. Honey, I love those gums. Sorry, I farted a little bit right there. It just kind of <laughs> snuck out on me. <laughs> At least I didn't urinate on you again this time, right, honey? That's, uh... Hey, all I'm saying is... Oh, wow. <laughs> I gotta start taking her on the road with me. Shit. Even if they don't laugh at my jokes, they'll laugh at that laugh, right? That's, that's good. <laughs> oh, all right. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Those mushrooms just now kicking in, or what's going on there? Is that pass me up a cap already? <laughs> I think I hurt myself when I tripped there, man. Anybody else see that? <laughs> well, we got the holidays coming up. Uh, you guys ready for all this? I mean, we're in the home stretch now, right? Right here. I'm not ready for it. I have a lot of bad luck over the holiday season. I think a lot of people do. It's not that uncommon. Uh, but uh, I do have a lot of bad luck. In fact, last year on Christmas Eve, my apartment in Chicago got robbed. You believe that? A robbery in Chicago? Yeah, never happens. Uh, well, I was out of town at the time, though. I was visiting my parents in Des Moines, so I wasn't in the place. And, uh, and I also live with my girlfriend. Well, she wasn't in the place either. She was out of town visiting her family. So nobody was at the place at the time, uh, but we found out about it while we were out of town. I got back to the apartment one day before my girlfriend got back, and so I had to go through the place and figure out what was missing and file that police report and do that whole thing. Very depressing situation it was. Uh, but whenever I'm in a bad situation like that, I always try to find some sort of a positive out of this dark situation. So that's what I'm trying to do in this situation. And, you know, it took me a while to find the positive, but eventually I dug it up. I realized that the robbers had taken a lot of good stuff out of my place. There was just nothing that I could do about that. But then I realized that the robbers really hadn't taken damn near enough of my girlfriend's stuff out of the apartment. And since she wasn't due back in town for another day, yeah, it really wasn't too late to fix that. I had to dig pretty deep, but I found the positive. So she comes home the next night. She's frantic, man. She wants to know exactly what we're missing out of our place. I run right down the list for her. I'm like, look, honey, they got the TV. They got the VCR. They got all your Dr. Phil relationship books. Yeah, they got your Michael Bolton box set. <laughs> oh, yeah, all four CDs on the poster. They were gone, yeah. That's the hardest thing for me to tell her, though, was that the robbers had taken all the crafts that she got at the craft store. Yeah, then they actually left a note there saying that if she went back to the store and bought more crafts, they'd come back and knock our place off again. <laughs> yeah, now we can't have any crafts in the apartment. Uh, the good news is it made about $50 on eBay, so uh, yeah, there was a silver lining to that cloud, too. Guys having a good time so far? Yeah. All right, six or seven people, that's good. That's a third of the crowd, right? Um, I do have to get out of here in a few minutes, make way for your headliner. You guys are going to love him, so uh, hang out, be ready for that. Um, I did want to mention I have a couple things that I'll have for sale after the show. Uh, if you'd like something, stop over and see me. Even if you don't want something, uh, definitely stop over and say hi. I'd love to meet everybody here. Plus, it would only take like four or five minutes anyway to meet everybody, so what the hell, might as well do it, right? No. Uh, first thing I have available is a men's shirt. This is a men's t-shirt. And uh, the front of it says, I know what the G stands for. Yeah, and the back of it says, and I can find the spot. <laughs> and then that's got the bullseye with the uh, G right in the middle of the target there. Uh, that's also got my website on the bottom, which is joshaltoncomedy.com. Feel free to go to that website at any time and uh, find out when I'll be back in the area. Uh, ladies, I didn't forget about you. I also have some shirts here for the ladies. Uh, they're these little pink tees. And they just say, find the spot. Oh, yeah, you got to be very direct with us, man. Tell us what to do here. 
Uh, that's also got the little G symbol on there, and uh, these come in the pink that you see here. I've got some black ones, and I have just a couple left in a baby blue color. Um, I've got all different sizes in both the men's and women's, and then I've got some uh, comedy CDs available as well. So I got all that stuff available. Uh, T-shirts go for 15 bucks. CDs are 10 Buy a T-shirt and a CD, and I'll cut you a deal on that. And uh, you can feel comforted knowing that all the money I make off of those products goes directly to charity. No, it's just my favorite dancer down at the titty bar. <laughs> um, help me out, I could use a lap dance, man. That's uh, maybe a trip to the champagne room if I sell enough. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, you guys have been a great time. Like I said, I gotta get ahead, uh, gotta get out of here. Uh, but the last thing that I wanted to say is, you guys have been so much fun that I really hope that each and every one of you goes home tonight, and I really hope that each and every one of you. Gets laid tonight. Yeah, hey, and here's what I'm saying too. Men, men, best of luck to you. <laughs> Ladies, don't be stingy. Uh, Hook your man up. That's all I'm saying. Make it a special night for you and your man. That's all I'm getting. But you know what's going to happen, though? Some of the gentlemen sitting in this crowd tonight might actually get their opportunity to go home and get laid tonight. And uh, some of these guys are going to go home. They're going to kick down that bedroom door. They're going to step on in. They're going to lay down on that bed. Within 30 seconds, they're going to be passed out. Yeah. And so, which for some guys is still long enough to get the job done. It's, um, all these guys are smart, though. They know exactly what to do if you pass out at night. That means you wake up a little bit early tomorrow, and you have yourself a little morning sex, right? Can I get a big round of applause for morning sex? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what it is, the non-morning sex section. That's what it is. Okay, now we figured it out. Uh, no, for the most part, most men enjoy morning sex. Most women enjoy morning sex. Uh, the only problem with it occurs when we men happen to wake up with a really bad case of morning wood, right? <laughs> Still quite a few women out there that don't quite fully understand that concept of morning wood. Still a lot of women out there that think that erection is purely sexual. When in fact about 99% of them are due to a man's extreme need to urinate. I like to refer to them as piss boners. Women. Do not attempt to play with a piss boner. That's a... Uh, it needs to become relaxed so that your man can pee. Um, I don't think you want to find out what will happen otherwise. You'll have some R. Kelly shit on your hands. Won't you, lady? That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, don't <laughs> I just don't think that a lot of women quite understand how hard it is for us guys to urinate down into a toilet with an erection. So let me just show you here. Here's me <laughs> with my erection um, scaled down a little bit, obviously. Uh, try to ignore that knob on the end there. Uh, I'm not a circus freak. That's uh, not to scale. And uh, here's me trying to urinate with my scaled down erection. Ladies, notice that non-bendage I got going on there. Yeah, in fact, the only way that I could get any pee to go down into the toilet at this point is for me to either bank it off the seat <laughs> or I can do a fucking handstand. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. You guys have been awesome. My name's Josh Holden. Good job, man. Thanks a lot, Ken. Come on, one more time for Josh Alton. <laughs>